Hi there, this is Mr. Alexander, and over the course of the next couple of videos, I am going to work through the Unit 3 test review with you. So let's get right into it. Question number one says, what systems of equations would you use to find the quadratic equation containing the points negative 5, 196, uh, negative 1, 12, and 4, 97? Uh, what you're going to want to do is take each one of these three points and plug the x and y into the standard form of the quadratic equation which is ax squared plus bx plus c equals y. So everywhere there's an x we're going to plug in the x value and where the y is we're going to plug in the y value. So we're just going to write the system of equations we're not going to solve it. So first off negative 5 squared is 25 and we still got the a uh, minus 5b there's no x attached to the c so it's just going to be plus c equals our y value of 196 that's the first equation so I'm going to write a little 1 next to it the second equation negative 1 squared is 1a minus 1b and we still got the plus c equals 12 now even though I'm not writing it, there's a 1 in front of that C as well. Uh, third and final equation. Uh, 4 squared is 16A plus 4B plus C or 1C equals 97. Now this is the system of equations that you'd want to solve in order to find the equation, but in this case we're just writing the system of equations. <laughs> so number two, we are going to write y equals x squared minus 4x plus 7 in vertex form. And the first step to doing that is always the same. We want to get the x squared and the x components by themselves, so I'm going to subtract that 7 over there. y minus 7 equals x squared minus 4x. At this point, you want to ask yourself the question, how do I turn this thing into a perfect square trinomial? And the way you do that is you take the b value, what's in front of the x, cut it in half, and square it. So the question is, what's negative 4 cut in half? Well, that's negative 2. Squared, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So I'm going to rewrite this thing as x squared minus 4x plus 4. But one rule of algebra, whatever you do on one side of the equation, you must do on the other. So I'm going to add 4 to this side, negative 7 plus 4 is negative 3. I can go ahead and write this thing as a, uh, I can factor it, and I can write it that special way, x something squared. Well, to figure out what it is, you just take that negative 4 right in front of that x, and you just cut it in half. It's going to be x minus 2 squared. I still got this y minus 3 over here. Uh, I want the y to be by itself to be in vertex form, so I'm going to add that 3 over there. y equals x minus 2 squared plus 3. This is the original equation right here, written in vertex form. Now let me show you really quickly how to double check that. If you go to your calculator, you go to y equals, type in the regu regular equation, the original, the standard form, x squared minus 4x plus 7, and then the equation we just found was x minus 2 squared plus 3. I always make the second line a little bit darker, uh, and then I graph them. If they're the same, I should only see one graph. There's the first one, there's the second one, so I'm feeling pretty good. That's how you double check it to make sure it's right. Alright, number 3 is the exact same question, just with different numbers. Write y equals negative x squared minus 10x minus 2 in vertex form. Uh, the only difference here is there's a negative in front of the x squared, but the first step is always the same. Get that negative 2 on the other side. We just want the x squared and the x by themselves. So change this to y plus 2 equals negative x squared minus 10x. Now like I said, I, I don't like that negative in front of the x squared because I'm not going to be able to make a perfect square trinomial when that's sitting there. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 1. And the effect of that is it's going to change the sign on all four of these terms, making it negative y minus 2 equals x squared plus 
10x, like that. Uh, now I can go ahead and make this a perfect square trinomial, and I'm going to do that up here. I'm going to make it x squared plus 10x, and to turn it into a perfect square trinomial, you cut the b value, what's in front of the x, in half and square it. So half of 10 is 5, 5 squared is 25. So if you add 25 to this side, you would better do it to this side as well. I've still got the negative y. Negative 2 plus 25 is positive 23. I can go ahead and factor this thing now. And I'm going to write it as x something squared. And the something is that half of the 10x. So half of 10 is 5, so I'm going to make this x plus 5. I'm also going to go ahead and move this plus 23 over the other side. So when I move it to the other side, I'm going to subtract 23. And all of that equals negative y. Uh, but to be in vertex form, it's got to be positive y. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 1. So y equals, so this term becomes a negative, x plus 5 squared. And then that term becomes plus 23. You should always double check it by plugging it into the calculator. So in y1, I'm going to type in the original equation, negative x squared minus 10x <clears throat> minus 2. And what I just found in vertex form is negative x plus 5 squared plus 23. And hopefully, uh, this thing's the exact same equation. All right, I see the first one and the second one. So I'm feeling pretty good that I've got the right answer. One more writing it in vertex form right here. y equals 3x squared plus 18x plus 3. The first step is always the same. Get the x squared and the x by themselves. So I'm going to move that 3 to the other side and make this y minus 3 equals 3x squared plus 18x. Now, I want to make this a perfect square trinomial, so I need to get rid of whatever's in front of the x squared. And I'm going to do that by dividing everything by 3. So I've got y minus 3 over 3 equals x squared plus 6x, because 18 divided by 3 is 6. I want to turn that into a perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to take half of 6 squared. Half of 6 is 3 squared is 3 squared is 9. So this is x squared plus 6x plus 9. And so over here I've got this y minus 3 over 3, but then I've got to add a 9 next to it. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it over here. I've got y minus 3 over 3 plus 9 equals, and now I can write this the fancy way, x something squared, and the something, when you have a perfect square trinomial, is just half of whatever's in front of the x there. So it's going to be x plus 3. All right, so I'm going to start now trying to get the y by itself. So I'm going to subtract 9 to the other side. I've got y minus 3 over 3 equals x plus 3 squared minus 9, because I brought it in from the other side. I want to get rid of this 3, so I'm going to multiply 3 to both sides. It's going to give me y minus 3 equals 3, x plus 3 squared, and then 3 times 9 is 27. The last step add 3 to both sides. y equals 3, x plus 3 squared, negative 27 plus 3 is negative 24. And you always want to feel good about what you've accomplished, so we should double check our answer in the calculator. 3x squared plus 18x plus 3 is the original equation, and then we found 3x plus 3 squared minus 24 in vertex form. I'm just going to graph them and make sure it's the same graph. There's the first one, and the second one. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about that. That seems to be another way, if you didn't want to graph it, if you just look at the table, look to see that these y values are the same. That's another way you can double check it without actually having to graph it. Just make sure all the y values are the same. Uh, okay. We're going to be done with completing the square for a little while. Now we want to find the equation containing the points negative 2, 7, 3, 37, and 0, negative 5. The easiest way to do this is on your calculator. Go into Stat Edit. In List 1, type in the x values, negative 2, 3, and 0. 
in list two, type in the y values, 7, 37, negative 5. And from here, you simply want to do stat calc 5, stat calc 5, enter, and it gives you the equation. It's 4x squared plus 2x minus 5. So you can just write that, y equals 4x squared plus 2x minus 5. That's it. It's just calculator work. Same thing on the next question. Find the quadratic containing the points. Negative 8, comma, negative 3.2, negative 2, comma, negative 7.7, and 4, comma, negative 6.8. So I'm simply going to go back to stat edit. And then you can just type over the numbers we've already typed. So I'm going to do negative 8 for the x, negative 2 for the x, and 4 for the x, and then negative 3.2 for the y, negative 7.7, .7 and negative 6.8. Be careful when you're typing these in because that x needs to be attached to that y, that x needs to be attached to that y, and so on. So don't mix up the order, keep the order the same. Stat calc 5, y equals 0 0.075 x squared plus 0x, so I don't need to write the 0, minus 8. That's the equation. And double check that, what you would do is you go to y equals, and in y1, just type in the equation we just got, 0.075x squared minus 8. Go to the table and make sure those points that we typed in are actually there. So I'm looking at negative 8, negative 3.2, negative 2, negative 7.7, .7, and 4, negative 6.8. So all those points are there, so I can feel pretty good that I've done it correctly. All right, let's go on to page two now. This review. And this will be the last question I do on this video. So we've got a number seven here. For the function y equals negative three times x minus seven squared plus two, write the domain range, write the location of the vertex, write the equation for the axis of symmetry, and write the concavity. Um, well, let's do the ver vertex first because that's the easiest. This thing's already in vertex form. So you can see right here, the 7 and that 2, that's your h and your k. That's always going to, when it's in vertex form, it's always going to tell you where your vertex is at. So I can see that the y value is 2. Now inside the parentheses, you're going to want to be careful because inside the parentheses is always counterintuitive. That says a negative 7, so that means the vertex is at positive 7. Now to answer the rest of these questions, I'm simply going to graph it. I'm just going to go to y equals, and I'm going to type in this function, negative 3 x minus 7 squared plus 2. And I'm just going to hit the graph button here. And what I, this gives me a pretty good idea about the domain and range. Right here, I can see that the domain for any quadratic that's going up and down is all the way to the left and all the way to the right. So the domain is simply all real numbers you can write like this, or you can use that fancy R. The range, however, answers the question how low to how high. This thing's going down forever, so it's going to go to negative infinity. The highest is the highest y value, which we already said was 2. So the range is from negative infinity to 2. Now it actually touches 2, so I'm going to use a square bracket. Um, I'm going to do this concavity question, because I can see it's opening downward. So that means this thing is concave down. And the axis of symmetry is the line that cuts this thing right in half. So I know it's going to be x equals something. The question is, is it x equals what? And you can always tell from the vertex, because it's always going to cut right through the x value of the vertex if it's up and down. So this is just going to be x equals 7, is the axis of symmetry. All right, I'll pick up with number eight on video number two. So we'll see you over there.